Hey guys, I'm going to introduce you to one of the strangest smoke detectors that I own. Um, I've actually had this one for a while, um, probably like two, three years now. I actually can't remember. I bought it. It was more of like an impulse buy that I bought off of eBay. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into when I got this, but there's still a lot that I don't know about this unit. I'm going to try to explain everything I know about this unit in this video. Um, and then there's definitely some more that will hopefully be discovered in the future if anything else comes out about these. So, um, this is a very old smoke detector. Um, it is made by Gentex, but rebranded by Newtone. Um, now I'm not exactly positive on the brand, like the like what this would have been labeled as honestly because it is missing some pieces um and it is in very rough condition um it's it's obviously used it's it came in you know you can see on the back it's got some rust but it's probably i'm actually not exactly sure when it's from this one kind of is is a strange one it's it's um in like it comes after the GX100 series which was the sort of bigger rectangular ones I'm pretty sure although um it definitely comes before the square ones that um look like the Master Guard models um like the ones that have the knob on them that are basically the uh, predecessors to the 7100 series the round one that I used to have um so this is a very weird one obviously um now, you'll notice that it's different, a different style from all the other ones. It's black instead of white. However, um, it, this may not be, like, the actual, like, cover part. There might be a piece that's missing from it um, that actually made it look more like the, like the Master Guard ones. Um, I'm not sure about that because we found older Newtone models that look similar to that. Um, and they look a little bit bigger than the Master Guard models, but we're not sure if they're, like, these ones just, like, if this is, like, if it's this, like, cover hidden under that or not because we haven't found one in person yet. Um, so I guess we won't know um, until we find one either new in package or new old stock or something like that. So, um, on the back, you can see, first of all, the front or the cover here, this black part is plastic. Um the back or the base is metal. Um, there is a label right here that's partially torn off, but if you, the weird part is if you fold it up like this, you can see some information still remains. It says new tone, ATTN, I'm not sure what that would mean. Um, Mattis, I think that might be short for Madison or something, I don't know. Um, and then CINC, which is short for Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where Newtone was from. Um, there's no other label. I'm not sure what this black tape material is, but it looks like it used to go over here. So that may have been for this piece. Um, the wires come out directly on the back. It looks like this black cover used to be screwed on here with these four holes here. I don't know. And then... I honestly don't know how this would have hung on like a bracket or something or if this would have hung on like the ceiling because there's no holes to like mount it uh, through directly to the base. Maybe this this tab here had something to do with it. I really don't know. There's nothing on the opposite side, so I'm not sure how this was mounted. Um, there's a piece missing of the cover on this side. You can see on all four sides they have the... Uh, this bar at the bottom here, but on this side, that bar is missing, um, probably broke off, but the rest of it is in, is intact. Um, the top has these round holes that go around the perimeter in like these two sort of L-shaped formations here. And then your horn output hole is right there. And there's nothing on this side because that is where the transformer is housed right there. Um, which is, again, why I think there was an outer cover to this, because this typically wouldn't be something he would see, just like the transformer there right out in the open. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and open the cover now. So the cover just lifts off. And like I said, it might have been screwed on before. If I could get this off. 
it should just lift off. Okay, there. There we go. And as you can see, the inside is very simple, but also it's 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 kind of weird. Um, I'm going to try to explain as best how I understand how this works. This is a photoelectric smoke detector. First of all, here's the inside of the cover. You can see it has all these chambers and vents and these zigzaggy lines so that the smoke can enter but light can't so that it won't uh, trigger the sensor. And those holes all correspond with one of these chambers here. So I thought that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, no light can enter the sensor from outside. Um, so I'm not sure if there's some pieces missing in here or not. Um, but I'm going to go over how I believe it's supposed to work. First of all, your horn is right here. You have your Edwards. It's an Edwards uh, squealer horn. You can't really see. You can't see the shield logo because it's covered up by this plastic or rubber piece, which is for the the casing there. I think it's actually this piece right here broken off or something like that. Um, and then the transformers on that side, which I already mentioned. Um, so this smoke detector does not operate off of a photoelectric or it, it, it's a photoelectric detector, but it does not operate off of an incandescent photo beam. Like a lot of the early photoelectric smoke detectors of like the seventies and the late sixties did. Um, this one actually, I believe it does operate off of led, uh, a photo beam from an led bulb or an led, uh, component. So the LED is right here. It's inside of this little metal housing here. And it's, you can kind of see it in there. Um, it connects to those two uh, terminals there. And it shines when it's in normal operation, it shines a little bit onto this piece right here. But a majority of the light goes onto this piece here. Now, I think that one of these, these are both like some sort of electrically conductive paper or something like that. Maybe some copper. I, I really don't know what this material is. Material is. I just accidentally bent it. Um, so I think that when light is shining on this one, it's normal or something like that. And when it's shining on this one, like it's got to be shining on both of them to be in normal, in the normal, like not alarm mode. But when smoke comes in and blocks that light, from this one, then it triggers the alarm. At least that's how I got it to go off. Um, so it doesn't work that reliably. At least I haven't gotten it to go off with smoke before. Um, but there is a sensitivity adjustment right there that does function. And if you turn the sensitivity adjustment up, it will go off. So I think that's how I'm going to demonstrate it. Um, but I will show you at least the, like the LED uh, working and everything. Now, I'm not sure what these copper rings are for here. And like this one... They're actually both cut for some reason. There's some pins right here that I don't know what are for. Um, and it looks like there used to be pins here that may have been cut. So I don't know. And then there's some blank traces here, which may be for components on the underside of the uh, this little PCB here. Which isn't really a PCB, honestly, because this is so old. I think it predates those. Um, so yeah, very weird unit. So I'm going to go ahead and get this unit powered up for you. And I'm going to see if I can't demonstrate it working. Okay, I have it powered up. I have it plugged in. It is it is on right now. One strange thing about this unit is, while it is a hardwire unit, there is no visible LED indicator, or indicator at all, actually, I should say, anywhere on the outside of the unit. I'm not sure if there's one that should be and is just, like, missing or something, but I don't see a place where one could go, honestly. So I really don't know um, what the deal with that is. Um, so... It is on and powered, as I said. Um, I'm going to take the cover off and show you. Hopefully it won't false. It hasn't falsed at all yet. Um, but you can see that LED beam right there is on. And you can sort of see it's shining on that piece of paper there. And a little bit of it is going onto that material there. I think that's like, that's like something covered in paper. I'm not really sure how this works, honestly. Um... So yeah, now I'm going to test it by turning the sensitivity adjustment up, which will sound the alarm, hopefully. Actually, it will. I know it will. So it's a flathead. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so it's a very raspy sounding, you know, very raspy sounding buzz that it makes. Um, it's not unlike the uh, Vulcan Auto Sonic Mark SRO4 that I have. I want to hear it again. Let's test it once more. It's very loud. Will definitely wake you up in a fire. So, yeah, once again, I'm not sure if this sensor, like, the circuitry is missing anything, or if it's supposed to be like that. Put the cover back on. See, yeah, there's no place where an LED indicator would go, or an indicator light, for, like, just to tell you that the unit's operating, which would be ideal. So yeah, um, I think that's it for this video. That's really all there is to offer. Um, also, in the timeline of these, like I mentioned, they, I think they succeeded the GX100 series, the GX100, which was the original, and the GX100-1A, which was the second generation version that had the piezo horn. And then um, these preceded the S180 series, of the new tone ones, um, the, which were the large square ones and the master guard ones, which were also rebranded by Gentex. Um, and then after that, they went to this design, which was the S185 that I showed a couple years ago. Um, so yeah, but this is just overall a very obscure one. I'd love to know more about these. If anybody out there has any information about these, this model, what the model number would be, I guess, just like what the case would look like i don't know and what the sensor is supposed to look like that would be really nice um because i really would like to find one of these in good condition um so that is this very unique new tone uh gentex made smoke detector uh from the 70s so thank you for watching and more to come